How you doing? Otherwise. Oh, everything's great. Everything's great. I'm happy to be uh, done with school. <laughs> well, for for the year, I'm, and I'm actually I'm in a summer class right now, so I'm kind of. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. You know, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know all about kids having to take, you know, medieval music history courses when they're a jazz master's degree student, you know, so. And absolutely I do. It's so antiquated. Well, maybe not really, because when you think about jazz education really started to burgeon during my childhood. I mean, when I was trying to go to school, there were only like a handful of places to choose from. Right. Berkeley. North Texas State, uh, Miami. Mm -hmm. You knew of those places because of who went there, right? Pat Metheny went, or Jocko, you know, Pat Metheny went to Miami, am I right? And then the North yep. Texas State had a, 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 a reputation. Then there were some others that I really didn't know about, like IU, you know, where uh, 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 David, David Baker. Baker was, right? And... Um, What's the other one? Yeah, there's like a, some others, but they weren't really in the forefront. So that's still, I mentioned, what, four? Yep. Maybe there were five or six, but now, right? It's like everybody and their mother has a... Well, you know, that's that's actually something I really wanted to talk to you about because, you know, my experience coming back to school after spending five years, you know, on the scene and trying to do what I do, um, it's very revealing or illuminating to be back in school in this time and thankfully i mean my program is amazing the head of the jazz studies program is david bixler he you know lives in new york full time and he commutes so he's oh, wow. very much wow. in the scene and he you know he know he's he's a cat and he really oh. digs deep into us and we talk about you know all these all these things and i kind of <laughs> like my first action as a grad student i was like so mad about the entrance test i like wrote like a six page letter about it and wow. apparently they're changing it this summer i don't I'm not saying that I caused that, no, but I, it no, started but a conversation. I, yeah, good for you for standing up and 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 because I I bet if if they had presented that test to you in uh, nomenclature that you could understand, and if you could uh, present the answers in the way in the language that we currently speak musically, that you would pass with flying colors, right? And they would look at it and go like, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> I know Whoever they are <laughs> right 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 exactly it's just it, it's just unfortunate that jazz is always like pr like pr see it has to be like propped up in comparison to classical music like they have to put it in those terms for it to be deemed you know legitimate even though we're sitting there you know we've got our corner of the building we're making great music we're doing our whole thing and yet this the whole other side of it is like you know it has this, this weird slant against us yes yes yeah. Um, but, you know, so that was my one of one of questions is just I wanted to go back and get your perspective on when you started teaching at the collegiate level and how that career has kind of, you know, been burgeoning alongside your obviously professional career as a performer and artist. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting because I began teaching, I think I was about 22 years old. Wow. And that, yeah. Before I had, I didn't have a, a, an undergrad degree yet. You know, I had dropped out of, uh, I did a year at Berkeley and then I, I came back, went back home to New York. Like, what am I doing? Let me go back home and go to school. So I went to, uh, to Long Island University. They had a Brooklyn campus then and they were just starting. This is, so check this out. They were just starting their jazz program. Okay. And so they were letting a bunch of people in, you know. <laughs> so, so they gave me a, a they gave me a scholarship and I decided to go on and go there and um uh, the, one of the stipulations was that was that I had to play in the pep band. Oh man. Yeah, so that was interesting. Anyway, that lasted for all of 6 months maybe. You know, my heart wasn't really into school at that point. I was trying to play. Yeah. And um you know, they were oper opportunities around uh, my friends who who had started to to get these you know these opportunities and that was one of the that was basically the impetus for me to move back home so anyway I was half-heartedly going to school really to satisfy my satisfy my parents and um 
then I started working, you know, I got called to start traveling and playing, you know, playing on records and, and all of that. So I quit school. So about a year after that, I get this, uh, this like random call on my um, answering machine, you know, when it was like a cassette. <laughs> right. And uh, it was Jackie McLean. Hey, wow. Bobby, you know, I, wanna, uh, I, got, I got this is Jackie McLean. I, I got some work for you, man. And I'm like, hey, Bobby, this is Jackie McLean. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Trying to see if it's a friend of mine or you know, somebody's playing a practical joke. So I'm like, well, first of all, how did this guy get, how did he get my number? You know, I don't know. But in any case, he was the director of, uh, was called the African American. It probably still is called the African American uh, Studies uh, at um, uh, University of uh, uh, Oh my gosh, Hartford, uh, Hart School of Music, right? Okay. And uh, in Connecticut, so he wanted me to come up and do like uh, um, biweekly master classes. So I was going up there two months, two uh, times a month. Uh, and, and, you know, I had never taught and I, wow. I was like, what, what, what should I do? I mean, I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. what, what should I do? Like, I've never taught before. I don't know what to do. Like these, you know, these the students were basically my age, right? Right. 18, 19, 20 years old. He's like, man, don't worry about it. Just, just be yourself. And, you know, they're aspiring to do what you do. They aspi- they're aspiring to do what you're doing. So just share with them, show, teach them, show them what you know, and that's it. And so I was like, okay, you know, I trust you. So I would get on the bus and the Greyhound or whatever it was and, and ride up to Connecticut twice a month. And I did that for a year and it was fine, you know. And um, after that year, he pulls me to the side when afternoon and he says Bobby I want you to run the guitar program here I'm like what (laughs) now again I had no undergrad degree I was really still learning yeah to play like I still am in a way but you know like really back then and I had to turn him down I said Jackie I can't I wonder if I was still calling him Mr. McLean. He probably had me calling him Jackie by then. I was like, man, I cannot accept that. He's like, man, no, no, no. Yes, you can. You can do it. I'll help you. Wow. And I didn't feel equipped or ready or qualified or any of those. And so I turned him down. Imagine that was like 1983. I'd been, I'd be sitting here collecting that pension. <laughs> <laughs> right now, had I been more of a, um, I don't know, capitalist, uh, I don't know, you call it what you want, because some people would have taken it and and maybe I should have, um, uh, 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 maybe it was advice and he, I'm sure he would have mentored me, but I don't know if I was really ready in a number of ways and yeah. certainly not as an educator or as a musician slash educator, not yet. So I knew that and I, I, I declined. I mean, that, that's, that takes some, some humility or at least some, some self-awareness of what your goal sort of was. Cause you know, if I think, I think of most people my age or, or that age now would be offered something like that, they would probably have to take it because I mean, a, the scene is just so different. There aren't as many opportunities just to be able to play and, and hang and make a living. But, um, yeah, that's, that's incredible. Well, you know, it's interesting though, because I don't even know if I thought it through like that, like it was a goal that I was trying to first establish myself as a player. Blah, 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 okay. Blah. I didn't operate like that. Yeah. I operated like this kind of like a youthful, naive young man, like just living day to day, which is kind of when you now looking back, I mean, that's how we should live. You know, we can't take stuff with us. Yeah, we can amass wealth, hopefully, and pass it on to the, if we're lucky or if we're born into that kind of situation. But, you know, there's a certain uh, equanimity to living in the moment, living Okay, tomorrow I'm going to, I don't look too far in the future, too far in the past, you know, so it was more like I was just operating on um, my truth, which at Mm. the time was, I was not equipped to, to, 
to hold that position. Yeah. That's all it was. That's simple. You know? wow. And yeah, there were, I mean, so there were opportunities, but that didn't mean that I was supposed to necessarily have them. You know, it's an interesting sure. thing that I, I think, you know, I think people um, may have some kind of misconception or some kind of idea that, oh, well, you know, you grew up in New York and, you know, the scene was different. Well, yeah, the scene was different. And I did grow up in New York. So, <laughs> you know, like, does that mean that if somebody, you know, created a situation for me to, to or, you know, yeah, just to, to sit in with an Al Haig, which happened, that I wouldn't fall on my face and look like an idiot and that be it? Yeah, that could have very well happened, but that's not what happened. Yeah. You know, so not to say I was a prodigy, because I certainly don't feel that I was like at all. But I had done enough homework to uh, ingratiate myself to Mr. Haig. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's some lineage right there, like one step away from Parker, basically. And I knew that. <sighs> By then, I knew that. I was 16. I knew that. Wow. I knew when I looked at that chalkboard going into that club, I was like... <gasps> Because the guy that took me was a mentor and he just told me we were going to sit in, call your, call your mother and father and tell them, you know, we will be home a little late. I was doing some work, you know, I was working professionally with him. He uh, had written an off, off Broadway play. We were doing it in Brooklyn. And, you know, so this one evening after the, after the play, he says, call your parents, uh, tell them we're going to go, I'm going to take you to sit in. And I'm like, what's that? Uh, I called my mom and I told her, and she's like, what's that? And I said, I don't know. I'll tell you when I get home, but we'll take me and we'll be home like 1230 or one. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. I walk up to this club and there's the, on the chalkboard, it says the Al Haig Trio. And I, I'm like, whoa, that's the piano player for Charlie Parker. You know, so yeah, I was thinking about the degrees of separation. <clears throat> Wow. Absolutely. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so how did you, so, okay, so after you turned down the Hartford thing, mm -hmm. when did you find yourself uh, with the with the next opportunity to teach at the collegiate level? Okay, so I, I continued teaching there uh, until I left, uh, so this must have been 82, 83. So 82 was the first year, 83, and then I left for Chicago in 84. And so I had done my two years of master class teaching at Hart School of Music, got to Chicago, started to try to establish myself playing. Um, a couple of years prior, I had done a, uh, some kind of recital performance when I was at Berkeley with some of the professors there. I was fortunate to, to have, you know, I did a lot of gigs with, with I was in a band of uh, Bill Thompson, professor there, and, um, and just, you know, and so I think it was on one of those gigs that I did a recital that I played with uh, Bill Pierce, tenor, tenor saxophonist with Blakey and, 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 and Tony Williams and others, and a uh, longtime Berkeley professor, you retired uh, a handful of years ago. So Bill Pierce, Bill Thompson, James Williams, the pianist, was yeah. on, that, on that gig, and bus and um, Rufus Reed. Okay, wow. Right. So, okay, so I, I'm, a, I'm a baby, right? So I do this gig. Okay, so I get to, and that's actually how that that's what led to the Art Blakey the gig was. Got it. From James Williams, from James, that yeah, time, from that performance. Okay, so I moved to Chicago, 84. I established myself, it's about 85 now. And I get wind of this master class at the American Conservatory of Music and Rufus Reed was gonna be doing. I think it was his master class, the Rufus Reed's master class. So I'm like, oh, you know, and I was the kind of, the kind of young man that, you know, if I knew somebody, I would just show up. Not necessarily to play, yeah. just to be there and glean whatever. So I show up, I have my guitar um, 
And he sees me, oh, Bobby, great to see you, man. How you doing? Blah, 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 blah. You want to come up? Come up. Look, come up and play. So I'm sitting up there. He's giving a master class, and I'm sitting there. So we, we play a tune, and I take my little solo, and the tune's over, and now it's discussion time. So some gentleman from the audience says, I have a question for the guitarist. Okay, what did you play on the third bar of that tune? I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, you know. I But I said, okay, well, I don't remember exactly what I played. I said, but the third bar of that tune is are these chords or this chord, whatever. And some of the things that I think that I may have thought or that I think on this is are these things like I could do this and coming from that chord going to the chord I could do this and that so I, I was explaining myself and that was enough that two weeks later or so I got a call from the American Conservatory of Music about teaching guitar wow. yeah yeah so that's how that started I taught there for um I don't know five six years so under, uh, you know, uh, um, adjunct. Everything yeah, was adjunct yeah. at that time for me. Yeah. And really, again, still, oh, for many years, uh, I was not comfortable in the position of uh, guitar adjunct professor. Like, professor? That doesn't even sound right. I'm 25, 26 years old. You know? <laughs> I mean, it was a different day. Plus, you know, I came from a different kind of... Uh, mindset or different school of thought but we weren't thinking about teaching yeah we didn't yeah have to think about that necessarily i mean you, you, teaching meant get your teaching certificate and teach public school that's right. what teaching meant like nobody thought about teaching at the college level okay, yep. so here i am teaching at the college level so you know there were many many years of uh, discomfort because I was not comfortable in my own skin, let alone mm. being a kind of an outsider in this world of academia. Now yeah. here I'm, I'm operating alongside people that this this uh, area may be their only connection to jazz music. And here's this kid coming in who has a true connection to jazz music, who's kind of doing what they're doing, but approaching it from, you know, and I, I always felt uncomfortable, like something like it just, I didn't feel like I was thoroughly accepted or thoroughly um, b b b b believed, mm -hmm. like, you know, and that lasted for a long time until maybe my mid thirties when I began to start to feel like I had garnered enough experience overall. Mm -hmm to be someone's mentor, to to have uh, had experiences that were uh, um, conducive to me sharing some, teaching somebody something, you know. Um, so, you know, I went from American Conservatory of Music, then um, there was a handful of years that I didn't teach. Trying to get my timeline together, let's see, because, <laughs> It'll come back to me. But 2000, I got a call from DePaul University. And um, <laughs> one of my stipulations at that point was, you know, it was another adjunct gig. And I was like, that I'll do it as long as I can teach private lessons from my house. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, 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 as little as I have to be in that environment, the, 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 the less time, the better. Yep, <laughs> I can. They can, and they can come to my, but to my uh, apartment and see my. Actually, yeah, we had uh, we we had our first house at that point. Come to the house, they can see my office slash studio and get a real feeling of how of what it is to be. You know, just be in my world. Yeah, I thought that that would be beneficial to them, and it also allowed for me not to have to be. I still was guarding, uh, uh, guarded against, um, um, about those feelings, you know? And so I taught for, uh, them for, uh, 
a number of years, um, seven years. At mm. And I never forget, I was in the mail room one day and another black guy walks in and it's like, we looked at each other like, hmm? <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> <"You're>... <laughs> oh, for real. Yeah. And and he, he's like, what department are you in? He's older than me. I said, I'm music. He's like, well, don't let them do to you what they did to the choral the professor because he was here 11 years and he never advanced and did anything, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, you know, he's like, you teach adjunct? I'm like, yeah, it's, I'm teaching adjunct. He's like, well, you know, you should try to get a, a you know, system. I'm like, man, I, I don't have my master's. And he's like, so? He's like, they got these classical people, these uh, the symphony people that don't have their undergrad that are, you know, tenured. I'm like, really? He's like, yep. I'm like, well, maybe it's a little different for them, you know. So I'm like, who is this guy? And he wasn't even in the music department. He yeah. was like an English professor or something. Okay, so then I saw him another another time at the grocery store and I ducked. <laughs> I I yelling at you. I didn't want to hear the harangue, man. I was like, oh, that's that dude. Let me go this way. <laughs> Several months passed and one morning I woke up. Like, you know, I wake up with these thoughts of the extreme clarity. <laughs> Uh, I wish I lived. Can I get some of that? Day. Huh? Can yeah, I get some I, of that? I the rest of the day like that. But, you know, in the morning when I first wake up, it's like stuff is crystal clear. And I woke up this one morning and was like, you got to get your master's and you need to do it now. Wow. What? Okay. <laughs> you know? So I looked at two programs in the area, right? Uh, uh, one was in Northwestern University, which is the, the, the town that I live in, Evanston, which I live across the street, literally from Chicago. But I live in Evanston. That's where Northwestern University is. And they had a, a nine month program. Really? Jazz pedagogy. Wow. OK, so there was that or there was a program at DePaul where I was currently teaching. Or wait, was I still teaching it? Yeah, I was still teaching there at the time. And um, it was two years. Yeah. And I thought, okay, this is maybe a little too close to something. I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Plus it's two years. Right. Plus I'm looking at the situations and it's like, no, this is this is, looks better. <laughs> so I met with them and um, they let me in and I did it. Wow. And it was not for the purpose of securing any kind of position. Huh. That was not in the thought at all. It was just, I need to do it. And I need to do it because I've been teaching for on and off for 20 years at that point. And I deserve to have that. I, I, I deserve to have that qualification mm. of, of a master's degree. Next to my name, I've been do. I put the time in. I'm, in fact, an educator. So, that was the that was the reason. And um, still not thinking about a a full time position. I was not thinking like that. Yeah. Uh, even after the gentleman had to, to, you know implored me to uh, to consider it. But I did do the master step, and then that was the year that I learned about academia, from uh, being at Northwestern, and from seeing, having to take that entrance exam, having to take the exit exam, which I was told I was not, I would not have to take. And then at the end, the last couple of months, somebody changed their mind. That you have to take it. Wow. And I, I, uh, I, um, I protested and well, I, I just, I got them to let me do it in the way that I suggested in the very beginning. I said, if I can analyze this piece in the way that we, uh, the way that we speak in our language and our nomenclature, then fine. Yep. And they said, okay, fine. And I did it. 
And I'm sure they were like, mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and I passed. Yeah. I mean, I did, you know, I knew what the, I was writing, what was there. Exactly. This is an enclosure. This is a sh- minor with a sharp five right here. And they, mm-hmm. Whatever. So I got out. And, but I saw, I saw the, I saw the politics. I saw the, ooh, the underbelly. The, yep. Not that all places, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it depends on who you are and what you're doing and, and who's there around you and the whole, you know, what's around that, you know, is the program supported? Is the school of music, is the, is the college supporting the school of music? You know, look, mm-hmm. all of that which I didn't see so much of, of, of that, but I got a feeling about those things. And I said, oh, okay. So I decided, well, you know, I, after I left DePaul, I was like, I'm not gonna do any more adjunct teaching. I mean, this is not what I should be doing. Now, by this time, we're talking about 2010, uh, 11, because I had, yeah, it was like after I left Sunny, the okay. second time. Of course, as soon as I enrolled in grad school, Sonny Rollins called again and wanted me to get, join the band. Oh, man. I'm like, damn, I can't say no to that, right? So I was going to school, playing full, the, full, you know, his version of full time. Yeah. Who, you know, wow. Not every day, but you know, it was, and um, so anyway. Eventually, I started to apply to positions because I saw people of my ilk, musicians mm-hmm. of my experience level, performing musicians slash whatever, that had these positions and it was growing. And I was like, yo, I absolutely certainly am qualified and should have one of these now, you know, guitar, uh, Professor of jazz guitar positions are few and far between, but when they would show up, for the most part, unless they were in Bumble, you know what, I would apply. So, um, so you were you were even interested in, in maybe moving away from Chicago if the situation was right? The situation maybe. was right. Maybe. Yep. I applied to maybe Seven or eight positions over the between the years of uh, 2011, because Coleman was one. 2011 was the first, like, kind of entree I had into that okay. idea of applying. Um, 2011 and to to when did I get to just 2019? So eight years. Wow. I applied, and it was you know maybe like av- on average it was about one a year. You know that was, uh, um, you know, suited for, for, for me. And um, the first one was like a joke. I mean, I didn't know, I didn't have my thing together. I, I didn't put that well. You know, it's a learning experience and I'm so glad I didn't go, have to go there. Anyway, so, um, and then as I, interviewed more, I got better. So by the third interview, uh, no, the first interview was funny. I was, ha! Woo, man. Oh, you about, yeah, it was hilarious. But um, by the third one, I was pretty, I, I was pretty good. I had my okay. stuff together. And um, so then I started getting calls as finalists, you know, fly up to the school, do the whole dog and pony show. And, um, And then I learned about that. Like, even though you might be a finalist, that's, you know, somebody else may be pegged for that position and they're just bringing you up out of, you know, it's like protocol, formality. Yep. yep. That happened a couple of times. Um, and it got to the point where I was like, I would say to my wife, I don't know if this is meant to be. This just may not be what's supposed to be, what's supposed to happen in my life. And she would say, yes, it is. And it will when it's, mm. right. when it's right, it will. When it's the right time and the right thing for us. You do believe that, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, so, 
because there were a couple of positions that I mean I should have gotten, but I did. Sure. And, you know, and I learned maybe in in hindsight why, and it didn't really have anything to do with me necessarily. So then finally, you know, the last position I had before the one or the last uh, final was call I had before the one that I got was a chair of the guitar program at Berkeley. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, what? So I applied to that, you know, a couple people, somebody was like, you need to apply to this. And I'm like, come on, man. I, <laughs> do it. OK, OK, fine. Whatever. I had my stuff all together. Wrote the letter, you know. I like to write. Yeah. Threw it out there, forgot about it. Da, 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 ring. Wanna do a phone interview? What? Okay. Do the phone interview. Whatever. Da, 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 da. Bang. Da, 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 da. Whatever. It's not gonna happen. Mm. A couple months later, bling, wanna fly you out. What? So I just I just did it because man, it that was so cool. 40 years later. Wow. Right. And I'm walking around and like, wow, Slice used to be right across the street. And now it's a guitar center. Oh, my God. <laughs> crazy, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So cool. And um, and I didn't get it. And I didn't I wasn't expecting to. Mm. And then the phone rang and the next one was the one. Mm. Right. An hour and a half from home. Beautiful, beautiful university yeah. environment, wonderful uh, 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 colleagues, great program, uh, a storied program, storied school of music. Yep. College of the Arts, uh, storied college of, of, of uh, visual and performing arts. Supported, I felt welcomed. I felt like just be yourself, just mm. do what you do and wow. teach. What really <laughs> cool? I can do that. That's yeah, go to meetings and stuff. I can do that. <laughs> wow, that that's an incredible journey. I it's mean, a, it, the first thing that I that comes to mind that I like respect a lot is that you obviously know the importance of the role of an educator and how important that mentorship can be. And, you know, because I I hear so often like the trope is that like, oh, you know, if I can't like teaching is my fallback, like when in doubt, I'm just going to teach. Right. Like, no, that's that's a horrible disposition to be to come into the classroom where you just oh, this is just my fallback. This is just, you know, the day gig. Like, no, you're impacting people's lives on such a personal level. You may never even know. That's you. You, yeah, that's you talking, you know, I mean, and it's such a it's the it's the uh, modus operandi currently. I mean, you know, you look at your favorite players and and they all have to teach. They all do teach. They all have taught. Um, but it wasn't so much, like, you know, it wasn't so much like that um, when we were. There were some some of some of them, but. Yeah. Well, you know, for better or worse, since everyone has to teach, I mean, not everyone is a great educator either. So sometimes you get cats that are incredible players, but it's it's a whole other thing to be able to, like, you know, convey that in multiple ways to students, right. you know, all that comes with teaching. Right. So it's, it's interesting. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, you have to be at a certain place and and that doesn't mean you have to be older at all it just means you have to understand what you just said and that everyone is different and there is no one method that's gonna you know do everybody's approach everybody's learning um, process is different and the whole thing it's like you're, you're teaching individual students in that sense you know when you're teaching a primary instrument not teaching a class like a group strong <laughs> um so. yeah i've i've always gravitated towards educators as a student myself that want to meet you where you are and will will just you know know what you need 
as opposed to giving you their thing or their way of doing it. Like, oh, this is my thing. This is how I play. So this is how you're going to play it because that's the only way I know. I I always, you know, gravitate towards educators and, and players who are like open. You know, maybe what I do is not exactly what they do, but they're able to, you know, figure out what I need. At, at that right. you know stage of my career, which, which is even right now, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's certain funda- fundamental things that are necessary. We know that you know you you have to, to uh, be equipped with to be able to get around the instrument. You know, I find a lot of times people just don't know how to uh, traverse the neck and 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 how to break up the. the you know, into positions. If they don't, then my way, the way that I learned, the way that allowed me to learn was the caged system. But, you know, I understand that some people have seven fingerings and and all these things. That's fine as long as you can execute them for me. Mm, Yeah. You can't. That doesn't mean we have to do caged, but you got to do something that convinces me that you have a command of these things. Otherwise, we can't, you know, who are we fooling? Exactly. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, not getting yeah, past all your room. You know, a lot of the, well, I mean, you know, so a lot of times, it, you know, I, you, you find yourself kind of starting from the beginning or whatever, however you want to look at it um, with, with some students. And then others, you know, like you say, you meet them where they are. Um, like the, the young man I was talking about earlier, you know, he tunes in all fourths. So like, wow. you know, yeah. And I'm like, well, I guess, but I said, you know what, you're on your own as far as that, like, you've got to do everything we do, but you're on your own to figure it out. Then when I heard him play, I was like, oh yeah, you're definitely on your own. Cause you, you got it together, but wow. I can't, I can't get between that B and that E string for you, or whatever that note is now for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> right. Is it CF? Is it, is it G? I don't string? even know. I never even asked him. <laughs> never, it must be. It must right. be. But I never even asked him. That's, what That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And he's grabbing everything, just like grabbing all the chords. And wow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, I, I wonder what your thoughts. Um, oh, you know, okay, I kind of went down a deep dive on your blog, which is killing, by the way. You're a great writer and so many oh, great, great posts on there. Um, a lot of nuggets. Um, and actually, I was teaching a student yesterday and we were talking about transcription. And um, I was telling him, he was like, well, I was telling him to do something from Remember Hank Mobley, you know, Soul Station. I'm like, mm-hmm. just get anything off that. Like, whatever grabs your ear and that you're excited, like, that'll be really good for you. And I was telling him, like, not to worry about doing whole solos. Like, you need to glean something that pops in your ear instead of just trying to learn the whole thing because it's not really going to suit you. And then I was on your blog and you were talking about transcription. And, like, there was, like, this whole paragraph where you are talking talking about, you know, finding little nuggets that you gleam. And I sent, I copied it and sent it to him. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. He said it a lot better than I did. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but what I was going to say is just you had a post about ac- academia, um, and, <laughs> and just how you know the, the the how the jazz programs are supported or not supported. And I just wonder how you know you're in this full time position now. How do you how do you see your role in in a jazz studies program in 2021? How do you create a sense of community? How do you create a sense of you know this music that doesn't live entirely within the walls of the ivory tower you know how do you bring that to your students and to a program well fortunately like i said earlier i'm uh surrounded by colleagues in the jazz studies program at uh, northern illinois university that are players really they're 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 active uh, musicians and so the feeling is there from that you know we just that's how we operate that's how we walk around that's like you know you Jeff Bradfield's across the hall for me there's always some great music coming out of his office you know yeah. I'm playing stuff you know it's 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 kind of like uh, uh, innate in 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 the halls, in our hall, you know, it, it's it's how we 
how we operate um in you know it's it's, it's like what what Jackie McLean said to me all, all I'm doing is sharing what I know sharing my experiences now which are you know kind of magical to these people you know I'm talking about people playing with people that played with bird and you know playing with miles and different people like you know what and yeah and looking at me like who is this dude um but it is what it is it's for real it's yeah. this is real and it's like this is part of the connection yep this, so I may be three generate two generations removed but here I am in mm-hmm. the flesh here we are it's this is what it is this is how the music evolves this is how you know generationally this is what it is uh and so you know i kind of implore people to take advantage of that opportunity that they have to learn and be around and like ask a bunch of questions and yeah you know everything's different now and i don't know well, I kind of do because I'm still in it. I'm still yeah. doing stuff. I still have to navigate it. So, uh, and I've seen a lot of iterations of it, whatever it is, you know, trying to do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that's how, you know, just by being and and hopefully um, uh Carrying myself as the person that I am, you know, yeah, you call me Prof Boom, but I'm not a scientist. I mean, unless we're geeking out over <laughs> guitar stuff, then right. I can get pretty weird. But uh, <laughs> overall, you know, I'm just normal and here I am. So let's be musicians together, right? Yep. And well, that's, that, that's the attitude. That's, I think that's the, the key, like you said, that community of professors where everyone is coming from, you know, they're, they're players, mm-hmm. play their butts off. And I think, I, I, you know, I know there's a lot of schools that are like that, but there's also the scenario. It's, it's so like, we're kind of told that we have to go, you know, people like my age, we have to go all the way through our doctorate just to be considered, you know, adequate for whatever it is. And that's kind of worrying because, you know. Well, what for what? Well, uh, I mean, you if need to get a to get a to get a, a teaching position. Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I I just feel like the the attitude I see a lot is that, you know, we're, we're told in society that we need to have a terminal degree to you know have some sort of opportunity for, for that security of of having a teaching position, which, again, is pretty ubiquitous um, at this point, for better or worse. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just something I think about a lot. Where it's like, yeah, it's, cats might have doctorates, but like, what have they been doing? Yes, and right. Um, and you know, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to harp on any of my listeners or anything like that because everyone's situation is different, and there's tons of everyone's community. situation is different. Yeah, and it, de- it depends. You know, for cert- a certain person coming from a certain experience, background, what have you, them being in a place that requires certain things and doesn't look at other aspects of what this is. I mean, we're talking about jazz, perform. It's a performing art. It's got a lineage that has nothing to do with academia. That's the, that's who, that's the, what I'm about. Yep. Not talk. Not to rag on anybody else, but that's what I'm about. I came from that. That's what I aspired to. Yes, I was fortunate to have opportunities to teach. It kind of got me in that on the tr- on that track. And fortunate for me, I was able to find a place that accepted that, that looked at my resume and said, "Damn, <laughs> and he can." And he speaks well, you know, <laughs> he, can, he, he communicates effectively. I think your situation will, um, I don't know, not to get to uh, a law of attraction on, on people, but, you know, your situation will, will find you 
Um, I mean, it certainly has me throughout my career in every uh, in every facet of that. Yep. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, the beautiful thing about being in the music industry, I mean, year after year is that it's, it's, it's ever, it's, you're changing with it. You're changing as a person and that's going to affect, you know, what you're doing in the business, whether it's maybe you're going to be recording more this year. Maybe you're going to be teaching more that year. Maybe you're going to be playing more funk stuff this year. Maybe you're playing, so you know, all that stuff. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's obviously, you know, a beautiful curse being in that industry, but it is incredible that we get to, you know, change our direction put on different hats whenever we want and there's if not a lot can. of people that get to do yeah if we can not yeah. everyone not all of us can right yeah. i mean we i mean i i've been told that i take stuff for granted sometimes you know like well shouldn't everybody be able to do take no people tell me no <laughs> not everyone can do I'm like, oh yeah okay well I thought about it like that maybe not but you know so yeah, I mean, consider consider yourself fortunate to, um, you know, to, to have the wherewithal to say, I'm going back to school, and I'm going to do this, and you know, and I'm going to play, because you yeah. can certainly play, and all the different things that you what you know, all that that entails, the playing, you know, the, it's not just one thing, it, it's, it's whatever it needs to be, and that's uh, determined by your ability to, to deal with that. Absolutely. Well, that kind of segues into, into something I want to talk about with, especially your trio, because I, I love your trio. It's like, it's, it's amazing. And I, I, the first time I saw uh, the, the trio live was at the, the Archtop Festival. And that was just a killing set. I was just like, oh, good, thanks. Dying the whole time. Um, but, um, you know, one of, one of the things that I love about your trio and just the whole vibe is how your arrangements of not only, you know, American Songbook standards, but, you know, 70s, 60s, you know, all those great songs, because um, nothing's off the table for that. I love how your arrangements usually stem from like a rhythmic like there's something like very rhythmic about the arrangement as opposed to like reharming everything of course there's some reharms but i love that all of your arrangements there's got some sort of groove or feel that's just different and that's like you know the little thing that makes it unique to your yeah. trio and i'm very curious about how you know the the trio formed and how you guys are like just serious about the beat and one of the other things on your blog was you mentioned how you want um, people to make funk, uh, make the funk swing and the swing funk. And I love that. It's like the perfect, you know, explanation for that vibe. So I'm just, I'm just really curious about how you kind of got to that in the trio context. Uh, it's a, uh, like a, um, just a, a combination or amalgamation of, of, of my whole experience. Really. Um, I was listening to the radio, uh, it's probably, I don't know what my son, he's 10. I don't know what he thinks sometimes. Cause I'll put on, like I had, must've been like sixties, maybe seventies, early seventies music. Just, you know, I have a playlist that just like yeah. plays these songs from my childhood, which were like, damn, how they were all hits, mm. you know? And it's like, and I'm listening and I'm going, this is good for him because he's hearing melody. And then I thought, like, listen to all these melodies that I heard, like poignant melodies. You know, that's good. Mm. You no, know, that was good for me. Yeah. And then when I got into funk and jazz a little bit later, I I I realized what that was about. It was about the rhythm. You know, it's about like songs were set up even in the in the seventies. Songs kind of had these rhythmic hooks mm -hmm. more toward the you know mid seventies and into the eighties. You know, they had these like a lot of bassline hooks, Motown bassline hooks. Really, do 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 do. You know, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what set up the music. That's what created the environment. So. That just stayed with me. Um, it's part of my 
background and kind of what I uh, deem important in, in, in music. And jazz too, you know, you think about, think about certain jazz hits I can, I'm not going to go but and try to try to think about it. Boom, 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 boom. Totally. I mean, you know, that's just one that flies into my head, but. Yeah. Do, 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 do. The hits have to, they have to grab a person that doesn't know anything about reharmonization. Exactly. Right, 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 right. Like, what? <laughs> Who cares? Nobody, but, Right. You better draw somebody in with something that makes them feel like they know that thing, even though they don't. Mm. So not that it was that I was calculating this when I was, you know, arranging it. This is just how I feel about music. This is just what my understanding, my realization. This is what drives me. I want to play something that I want to play. <laughs> you know, I want to play something that I want to hear. Right. right? I don't want to hear a bunch of reharms. Mm. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but not. That's not what drives me. I'm not. I'm not a scientist. And, you know, I'm a feeling music lover. I'm a music fan. Right. So that's what it was. The trio was was that that impetus was the whole uh, Schofield trio for me, honestly. Okay. I heard that band. Wow. I was like, this is it. He was my hero anyway from like 77 or so when he played with the Cobham Duke band, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I'm like, who is that? So it was like guys like him. And um, I just looked up this dude. I can't remember his Conti. Uh, 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 the the guy that played with Tower of Power, guitar player to play with Tower of Power. Oh yeah, I just looked him up a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, oh those guys are. But like you know, this kind of hybrid, like a guy that you knew was playing some really juicy notes. Yes, the note choice. Yep, for the right, the note choice making the harmony flare out mm-hmm. not just some, some notes over it but that hitting that one coming yeah. off of that one those guys attracted me and then they could kind of play the blues and play rock yeah you know for me those were the guys that i kind of so so sco was that hmm. who is this guy and um so as i uh got you know so i guess in the Early 80s is when that trio was starting to really, you know, make records and stuff. Um, Shinola and, and Out Like a Light and uh, Bartok and those records. Yep. And the fact that they were all uh, original music and that they were so, the, tr- it was the, the sound was so full, never sounded sparse or empty and the you know, everybody's role was so clearly uh, defined yet integrated. And, you know, that just kind of was the template for what I wanted uh, to pursue. I wanted to learn how to, I wanted to figure that out. So, of course, mine was going to be different because I didn't have the um, inclination, I guess, to, to to put anything on my guitar. You know, I'm right. My, my sound is is what it is. That's how I hear myself. So it was going to sound way different in the yeah. beginning. It was like, ah, I'm like bare ass naked right now <laughs> with a bass and some drums. Drums, give me more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when it came time to record and present the group sound, uh, I had an idea what that was, but then and as far as the arrangements and how to make the music come across to listeners for myself being the listener, I, I needed to set things up uh, to, to, to provide character hmm. for songs, right? Right, yes. Exactly. Character that reflected me, reflected the group, like the, the song, I didn't want to go make a new song, you know, reharm it and put all these hits and the no, no. Wow, that's 
Yeah, that I feel like that's that's a that's a tough task. To it, it shouldn't be as tough as it is to just serve the song, you know, because I think we're. I don't know if we're told, but I think we got to think that our our stamp, maybe this is me just projecting my, you know, whatever, but, but you know, my stamp has got to be to put all the hits and do all the chords and like make the wrong audience be super into it. The wrong audience being the musicians. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's right. You're on it. That's that's what it is. Uh, so I'm it's just being able to it. step back and just... You know, I, I think I I was floored when I heard, um, well, it might have been Julian Lodge or someone playing trio. And I think it was Julian Lodge and he was ending a set. He played this old, old tune, Call of the Canyon, some like Bing Crosby thing. It's like really killing old tune. Mm-hmm. He just they just played it. It was like two minutes. And I was just like, mm-hmm. what? Mm-hmm. They just played the tune and they and they stopped. Like mm-hmm. that's crazy. And I was just mm-hmm. like, I don't need. You know what can I add at the end of the day that's going to be better than James Ingram song that I'm learning or Billy Preston or you know Randy Newman stuff. These are the tunes I've been learning lately because I'm like diving into that. I'm like, what am I yeah. going to add? I just want to play it. I don't need to do anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then if you're inspired to play a solo that is not about you, not about you showing anything that I can do, but this is what I, this is what my heart feels for this music, for Mm. this song, for this experience. Yep. Right? And that's something way different than all that other stuff. Yeah. I'll never forget someone, someone, you know, I was in a master class or something, just just playing tunes, and the clinician said, you know, don't let the melody just be a backdoor for your solos that are going to be ten minutes. You know, mm-hmm. and I was like, dang, mm-hmm. I just I just got got. <laughs> <laughs> they got me, man. They got me. <laughs> well, that's what it is. I mean, you know, if, I'd love to hear people play just play a melody and make me cry yeah can you do that you know yep i mean i've heard i've heard it done i've heard it done and then by instrumentalists not just singers yeah. singers yeah. do it good too because then they got the words to add and they you know i don't know that just makes it more poignant but sure. an instrumentalist can do that and it doesn't have you can laugh you can have just yep. have emotion have emotion so i don't know we're getting into the metaphysical but this is isn't this what music is uh, isn't this the purpose of music to you know feel and uh... absolutely always and i'm actually i'm curious um you know because i've thought about this a lot i mean do you do you ever Okay, so when when you give a character to a song, whether it's something you composed or something you have arranged, do you do you ever think of it as I want to express a certain emotion and I hope people get that emotion, or do you just want people to take whatever emotion they're reading from it? Like, do you do you think we're supposed to, you know, I'm gonna play, uh, you know, really joyously and everyone should feel joyously, or is it just I'm gonna put it out there and they can receive it how they wish? I don't know that I attach uh, those kinds of thoughts or meaning, uh, you know, in words to anything, um, because it's 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 like music. It, it makes you feel what the way that you do. You respond to music the way that you do. And you don't necessarily have to have words to describe it, right? You just you feel it. And so when I'm approaching music, that's kind of how I go into it without words, unless I'm in the rehearsal. Sure. We're con- con- conceiving something. And even then, it's hopefully done more through you know, I might demonstrate something 
in a certain way that uh, 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 you know kind of supersedes or, or, or takes the place of the words, right? So I was thinking about a tune that I did very different differently than the original. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. It was a couple of days ago. I don't remember what tune it was exactly, but like take a tune like um, I'll Never Fall in Love Again. The, the, the Dionne Warwick, Burt Backrack, I guess, wrote that. Mm-hmm. Dionne Warwick did it. And when I thought of it, I knew that it was a ballad. Like, I knew that it could be a ballad. It, it, it was, a, as a pop hit, it was a, a kind of bubblegummy. Yeah. Like that. But the chords, the melody, and the, the lyric. Mm. What do you get when you fall in love? You get enough. You only get a, 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 a you get enough pain to burst your bubble. You know, like it's like that's the yeah. You know, what do you get for all your trouble? I, I'll never fall in love again. Come on, man. That's like right, exactly. So I'm playing that thing like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just just getting a feeling that you get from the song and then maybe realizing it in a way that maybe it wasn't presented originally or maybe it was whatever. Sorry to cut you off. No, 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 not at all. I was was just saying, you know, I think that sometimes I want to be able to talk about music in that English word way and connecting it with, you know, our humanity and our emotions. But at the end of the day, you just can't. You well, know. It, it, when the humanity and the emotions, yes, that's okay. And sometimes even in doing that, we don't really need to say too many words. If we're on that wavelength, then we know what it feels like, right? But I think in, 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 a, lot, uh, in a lot of instances now, Maybe that's not how we're, especially in, I don't know if it's especially in jazz. I don't know. But I don't get that feeling. I get it's more about me and my solo and all these cool things I can do and all these combinations of these and the chords of reharmonization and of these rhythms that are doing all these different time signatures and really, what emotions are we feeling in relation to that? Is right. that for emotional purposes? Right. Or intellectual? Which is fine. Yeah. But that's not what jazz is. Hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry. I may sound like an old guy, but it just is not. Unless you're going to change it. And if you're going to change it, then just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. No, don't, don't be sorry, man. I, I I think it's an incredibly important to hear that perspective, and that and that's that's your truth. And I certainly agree with you. But it, I think it's just important to have have conviction, you know, especially when it comes to something you do your whole life. That's the thing. That's the thing. The thing is so easy nowadays. God, I mean, you know, with with just the way the world is, it's very easy to not have any convictions or to be like a weather vane that just blows in the wind of whatever, you know, social media post mm-hmm. you're reading or, you know, whatever it is that's going to influence us. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard because, you know, we're not supported in the endeavor of, you know, having convictions and looking to the past to help us along in that uh, uh, in that endeavor and those you know in those pursuits that are bolstered by that past and how we look to kind of uh, connect to that and then hopefully continue that or branch off or whatever you know this is like yeah. 
Well, you know, I, I don't want to take up um, too much more of your time, and I really appreciate you doing this, but I, I did want to go in, in one little more avenue just related to this. There was another thing on, on your blog that you talked about how it was important for you to realize that, you know, I'm paraphrasing, like Bobby Broom, the musician, is maybe separate from Bobby Broom as a person, and just important to have just a life outside of music. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, how you win and how you came to that conclusion and how, you know, your life outside music inspires, you know, your creativity and vice versa. Yeah, you know, I think just from living and seeing, I mean, I've always been a musician. So yeah, since I decided I was going to be a musician, which kind of was... It's just like that it happened. I was 14, 15, 14 years old, and it was like, this is it. This is what I'm doing. Wow. This is what I love. This is what I can see. If, if this is possible, what I'm hearing on this instrument, that's what I want to pursue. Like this life to get the feeling. It was always about the feeling too, because what I heard that inspired me, I knew I would never attain that specifically because hmm. it was too incredible. It was too singular. It was too, I was never going to do it. And if I did, then I would just be replicating what somebody else had already done. So right. it wasn't that, it was the, the feeling that I was getting, the exhilaration, the, any kind of emotion that the person could give me by the way that they play. I want to be able to do that. Hmm. If this is how you can live, make a living for yourself, by then I want to, and you can do it on the guitar because I'd never heard it on a guitar like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so I decided I was a musician and the next day I was acting like a musician, even though I sucked. I wasn't a musician. <laughs> I was a wannabe musician. So anyway, and I lived through all of that. I remained a musician and all kinds of things happened. You know, I grew up in New York and moved to Chicago. Like who does that? I had a, a, a career that was, you know, establishing. Yeah. I was one of the cats, you know, like right. young, young cats. And I move away like what? Who does that? That will make you have a norm like realize your normalcy when you're not that that Bobby Broom. You're walking around and you're just, you know, yourself. Yeah. It's the same self that left. It's not, it's I've always been this person. Okay, so that's what it is. How do I integrate? How do I realize where that is separate where those things are separate? How do I realize what um, supports the, you know, I mean, I say all the time that um, I've been married twice. The first time, it was, you know, in large part, the person that I was at that time, you know, relatively unevolved or something, immature something, and it wasn't conducive to, that relationship wasn't conducive to me being my best musical self, presenting, producing music to to offer to the world. Couldn't do it in that situation. But boy, the next time, <laughs> you know, I have a supportive partner that, I mean, I don't know, you know, she's just supportive. Yeah. And um, I could just be a family person and a musician and feel empowered mm. to, 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 to do that and be my true self. Um, I don't know, you know, and so not worrying about, um, not worrying about it too much, you know, I mean, there are joys and, should be joys in a lot of areas of life. And if you're joyful in your life, then you should be, you know, you should have something to play music about. Even, you know, the blues comes out of uh, not so great circumstances. 
Yep. And um, but but through the music was the joy. Through the experience exactly. of the of the music came the, the joy. Yep. And it was bittersweet. Yep. There's a, that Mary Lou Williams, the the tree. Have you seen that with all the branches? With all, she she had this like in this this graphic that she made. It's a tree, um, with all you know, the musicians that she heralded and loved. And but at the bottom, the roots, it it was suffering at the very mm-hmm. bottom. And I mm-hmm. I was doing some research on her this past semester for a class, and that just like floored me. It was it's such. I'll send it to you. It's it's, it's yeah, really beautiful and poignant that wow. you know out of all that, so much greatness and beauty and you know music can happen. Yeah, it's in, it's in, it's incredible when you think about think about it like that. You know, Billy Holiday and Nina Simone and all these people that just dealt with yep so much um, uh, difficulty. You know, I mean, I had people tell me you'll never be a leader. You know, just be content being a side man and doing, you know, various and sundry leader gigs from time to time, but you're not, you're not a leader. Wow. I also had somebody tell me you're not an, you're not an academic, you're no educator. You're a good musician, you're a good jazz musician, but you're no educator. So, ha! (laughs) I mean, you know, had I listened to that, I mean, it was not even a question about listening to it. It was just more like the gall of someone to actually say that and believe that and think that they could have an influence on my belief about who I was. You know, it's it's either in you and, you know, dying to come out or, or not. And that's okay. Either way is fine. You know, um, so mm. the inspiration for me is it has to be, um, has to be fueled by some of that, you know, yeah. deadlines are good too, but the deadlines help, <laughs> right. deadlines help but um, I need some, something else too. Yeah. What do you have coming up? Oh, me? Um, you know, I'm, I'm keeping my head to the grindstone with school for sure, but um, I'm doing some recording this it's summer. Two years. Yeah, it's a two-year program. Yeah, mm-hmm. so halfway through, blazing through it. You're um, doing, so you're doing, you say you're doing some recording? Yeah, I just I just cut a record with uh, my buddies at grad school a couple weeks ago. We've got a quintet, um, all original music, yeah. some cool stuff. Um, I'm hoping to do another trio thing coming up eventually too. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I'm, right now I'm just writing a lot of writing, a lot of arranging. You know, I'm just trying to shed <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. and just get 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 through school. School is my number one priority right now, right. which is great. I love being in that space again. It's it's a lot of fun. Good, good. How long has it been? Uh, in between it was five years mm-hmm. yeah five years so it was it was a weird transition a weird decision but it ended up you know i mean like a lot of things gratefully for me it, it just it, it ended up being just the, the perfect decision the perfect you know thing in, in the right moment so i'm right. very grateful right good good yeah yeah that works yep how about you what's uh what's in the works for you um, well, I'm, you know, school ended about three weeks ago now. And so, uh, just, I think, um, transitioning into the summer, right. Uh, this one was really a big one in terms of just feeling like I need the summer. I need to not have to. I just felt so busy and so, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm enjoying that, uh, transitioning, not having so much to do, sleeping late, staying up late, (laughs) going back to my old self. (laughs) Right. Right. And I have some, 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 actually some recording 
projects that I'm working on now that I need to kind of be wrapping up maybe by the fall. Okay. Uh, and so that's uh, on my mind and, you know, I'm kind of starting on in on those things and then being home with my 10 year old and making sure he's busy enough and, you know, Taking him to basketball, this and basketball that, and yep. you know, yeah, and just you know, just loving life. To, mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. It's you know, just yeah, I I, I appreciate what you're doing. It was, it was cool. I was watching some. I wanted to see the format, and so I was watching some oh. episodes. You know, last night and um. um Man, I didn't know about uh, I didn't know about Kevin teaching. I didn't. I don't think I knew that he taught public school. Man, I did I not know. know. I did not know that. That was an I, incredible story. I knew he was at. Uh, I knew he was in Champaign, right? Because he he was friends with a really good uh, a, 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 a really good musician friend of mine from back in New York, uh, okay. say who bunch of space player who played on my first record when when, I, when we were kids and wow, um, and so he was telling me about about Kevin and. So we met around that time and he was in Champaign. And then he had a student that came to me. Uh, I think he taught this, this young man in high school. And then he came to me at, when I was at DePaul. And, you know, he could play and stuff yeah. already because he had been with Kevin. And I'm like, is Kevin teaching at, uh, you know, the school out there? You know, the, what, what right. is it? The University of Illinois? I think so. No. Yeah, U of I. Yeah, he's like, no, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. What's going on? So, no. but I didn't know he was teaching public school. Yeah. So that story was incredible. I know, and he he just what didn't even play for years, and just the way that he he found Kirk Whalum and it's, was he serious when he said about the dusting off the guitar? I was you like, know, you know, he man, was funny. I don't know. I'm like, I'm right, right, Kevin, you're a <laughs> right, right. But he said, you know, man. <laughs> I love that guy because he's such a beautiful player and then yes, such yes. A spirit, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I was also that was cool just to hear that you uh, that school facilitated this for you. Yeah, yeah, it was I was in this guitar pedagogy class and one of the final projects was, um, you know, uh, uh, interview an edu a guitar educator. And I was like, man, I've been thinking about doing a podcast forever. Like, I just, this is my, this is it. So my first one was Barry, Barry Green. And that just ended up turning into the podcast. And I got a little grant from the school to, mm -hmm. to get some funding for paying for the hosting and stuff. So yeah, it just turned into this thing. Right. And I'm like, this is such a pet, you know, pet project where I just get to like nerd out with my absolute favorite players and, and uh, just pick their brains. I'm just, I'm over the moon that people uh, like you, you know, want to share their gift and their stories. So I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. It's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah. Awesome, Bobby. Well, um, I hope you have a great transition into summer. And, yeah, uh, I think I'm, I'm in awesome. it already. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm here, it is. <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah, it's good to see you again, man. And Likewise. Uh, next time in the flesh. Yes, I would yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Bobby. Okay, man. You too. Later. Bye-bye.